In the previous lecture, in lecture number 2, we have had a review of CMOS technology. In this lecture, we will be, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be simulating what we have studied in that lecture. That is, we will be simulating uh, different circuits in CMOS. So, in order to do so, we need a software which is our DSCH2. This software has already been provided in box. You just need to download this folder and you don't need to install it. After downloading this folder, you go into it and you will see lots of files are there and from these files you have to find DSCH2. Now this is uh, this is actually an open source software and uh, and this is a portable software and problem with this type of software is that uh, there are certain bugs which uh, creates problem when we actually want to uh, operate them. For example, since we are looking for a file called DSCH2 we cannot search it here. For example, we are searching it. If you are searching it here, DSCH, you see, we file, find the file DSCH. If we double click it, the file opens uh, and we, we see the interface, GUI interface. But if you want to bring a component from here, this is a single library, it shows an error. So if you if we search it here, it won't actually work. So, what do we need to do? We need to go back to our parent folder and we have to search DSCH2 from the list. Here we have DSCH2. If you double click here and run. Now, if you want to bring a component here, it works. So, in this in this case, we will just simulating some basic gates and uh, we will be uh, verifying what we have already done. So at first, let us uh, let us make an inverter. Now in this inverter, uh, we have a pull up network formed of PMOS and we have a pull down network formed of NMOS. Uh, we have to connect uh, our power supply to the pull up network. We have to connect our ground to the pull down network. And uh, from the connection between the pull up network and pull down network, we will have our output. So here there is a light we can see we drag it we click it and drag it here we get our output and here the two two gates will be connected and we will have our input so here we use a button we have a button here we use button for input now we have to connect or that is we have to wire the circuit to so wire the circuit there is an option called line add a line we click it and we dra drag over the region where we want to draw wires So here if we connect it, we have our basic inverter. Basic inverter will have this input and this output. It is to be noted that if you look here very closely, there is a dot. This dot indicates that this is connected. Suppose if we had connected, a, if we had used a wire like this, see the, here there is no dot. That is it wasn't connected. And another thing is, suppose we want to delete a component. For example, there is an excess wire here. We want to delete it. In order to delete it, we use this gun like uh, gun like tool we click it and we click on the component that we want to delete and it gets deleted and we can rename the inputs and outputs for example if we double click it and, in, and write a as input we can write not a as output now this is our very basic circuit let us simulate it for simulation we use this one simulation button so when the input is zero output is one 1 is indicated by red and 0 is indicated by blue. If the input is 1, red here, the output gets 0 and the light turns off. So, input is 0, output is 1, again input is 1, output is 0. Now, in order to stop simulation, we press this red button, stop simo. And when you submit uh, your circuits and its workings in a, uh, in a, a, project, a, in a report, you cannot just show the ones and zeros of all of them simultaneously. So what you can do is you can show a timing diagram. Uh, this software automatically generates a timing diagram. You can find the timing diagram here. If you click this tool, see this is a timing diagram where the A is our input and not A is our output. If you click here, you see when the input is 0, output is 1. If you click here, input is 1, output is 0. Here we see the actual values of it. This timing diagram you can use to show the outputs. Now, 
in case of larger circuit this is a very small inverter circuit in case of very large circuit there might be it, it might be necessary to use 10 15 20 inverters and it will not be very it will not be very suitable to draw a CMOS circuit draw this this circuit over and over again that is build this circuit over and over again in that case we can make a block out of it so that we can simulate things easier so in order to make a block the first thing we need to do is we'll go to file and save as and we have to save this inverter and now naming the save inverter save uh, save file is really important we can just name it inverter but there will be a problem you see there are already files called inverter and there will be a lot there are lots of files in the library of dsch so if we write anything here uh, it may create a problem so we have to uh, it may create a clash between the originally existing library and the circuits that we are creating. As a result, we will not name it inverter. We will try to name something that makes it unique. For example, my name is Abhir Asanakib or initials are AAA. So, we are right, I can name it inverter underscore AAA. If, you, if I name it like this, there will not be another, another file of the, the same name and it will not create any er error. And we use save. Now, this schematic is saved. Now, in order to make a block, we can do this. Here we can see schema to new symbol option. If we click it, we can see these names are automatically inverter underscore AAA and the symbol looks like something like this. We can increase the width, decrease the width and do all sorts of stuff. Uh, so, after doing it, once we are happy with it, we press, press OK. And this inverter's block has been created. Now, we need we may need to import that block in order to import that block we go insert we press insert and user symbol uh, when we press it it has to be noted whenever we save it we have to save the things in export dh2 dsh2 folder that is the folder from which we open the software again we need to when we need to open the symbol we have to come to this uh, this folder if we save our files in any folder other than this folder then and then those files may not be working those files may malfunction now we have to look for our inverter so we see inverter underscore triple a dot sym sym means symbol this is the block that we have prepared so we click this inverter underscore triple a dot sym and open see we have a block over here which is moving we, we click anywhere in the screen and block will be placed suppose here the block has been placed now this part A is the input of the inverter. This part A bar is the output of the inverter. Now we can put a button here and a LED here and see, light here and see if it's working. But in order to put the button and LED, we dragged it from, uh, from a dialog box that was present here. But that is absent now. If this goes missing somehow, we can click here. This is symbol library. And this comes back. We bring on the button and we bring on the led and we connect and when we simulate see here when the input is zero output is one when the input is one output is zero so whenever we use this block it will work the same as inverter now certain things need to be mentioned we are stopping the simulation for now suppose we made an error in connection for example if we delete this this line there is uh, there is uh, an error in connection so let us see what will happen if the there is error in connection. If we run the simulation, see when the input is one, the output is supposed to be zero. Uh, sorry, when the input is zero, output is supposed to be one. That is, the, this must be ray, red. But this is not red in this case. This is gray, and this gray indicate floating. Floating means there is some issues with the circuit. In order to solve these issues, we have to trace this line, this floating line back. This is connected to other PMOS and NMOS. The other two terminals of NMOS, here it's blue, here it's blue, so they are not floating. The other two terminals of PMOS, here it is blue, but here it is not blue. So, this thing is floating. So, in order to solve that, we need to put a line here. But before we do that, we have to stop simulation first. We stop the simulation, click on our line tool, and we drag it. And after this, we simulate, and it's, it works again. One thing is to be noted, very important, see? When, uh, when this wasn't working, this was already working because we did not save this, we did not create a new block. When this, 
that is this block will always be operational in the manner this block is created if we change this block we have to create this block again in order to change its behavior so we just stop the simulation and we uh, let us move and make something a little more complicated so we file a, a fi open a new folder new file i don't need to save it if you need you can now let us look at a NAND gate. We have learned already in the lecture NAND gate contains two parallel PMOS and two series NMOS. And from the this is a uh, pull down network, this is the pull up network. The uh, connection between the two networks there will be our output and there will be two inputs. So we are using two different buttons for input. So after that we need to have a VDD, we place it here, we need to have a ground, we place it. It's very difficult to place it here because it is very zoomed in. In order to zoom out, zoom in and zoom out, there are buttons. So we use this zoom out option and it zooms out. Then we drag it here and with our line tool, we connect the lines. These MOSFETs in parallel, these in series is connected here and this is connected here so this is our basic and uh, basic NAND NAND gate we have learned the NAND gate in our lecture already let us simulate and see if it works or not we are running the simulation and 0 0 gives output 1 0 1 gives output 1 1 0 gives output 1 but 1 1 gives output 0 so this is a perfect NAND gate in operation so since we have made the NAND gate, let us make, uh, let us first save it. Save as again, I'm naming NAND underscore triple A. I'm naming it NAND underscore triple A and saving it. After saving it, we made schema to new symbol. Before we move on to schema to new symbol, we let's name it A and let's name it B. And this output, since it is NAND gate, not A not AD. So, NAND gate. After we do that, we press, uh, we save it and press schema to new symbol. We have here A, here B and here not, uh, not AD. We can uh, rearrange this by, here sort by increasing and decreasing order. If you press increasing order, you can rearrange it. If not necessary, we can do that. So, we press OK and this is there. Now let us open a new file and insert our symbol, user symbol, NAND underscore triple A. Here NAND underscore triple A dot sim. Open it. We bring a button here, a button there, and a light here, and we try to simulate it. 0, 0 gives 1, 0, 1 gives 1, 1, 0 gives 1, 1, 1 gives 0. So the circuit is operational and circuit is operating fine. Now uh, let us uh, look and design the thing that I had instructed you to design. Uh, I had uh, taught you to design from expression. What is that? Uh, let us see here. AB plus CD whole bar. We wanted to design AB plus CD whole bar. Let's see how we can do that. This is a circuit. AB are parallel, CD are parallel. They are in series in case of PMOS, in case of NMOS. The connection is a little different. Let us just make that. Open a new folder. Uh, no, we don't save it. I'm zooming out. And here this PMOS and this PMOS are parallel. We are naming it AB. And this is parallel to this. We'll be naming them CD. In the case of NMOS also, we will have A and B in C ways. And C and D in parallel. After that, we will have a ground at the bottom and we will have a VCC at the top. We will have our output somewhere between the PMOS and NMOS region. So, at first we connect the lines, we will connect the inputs later. So, here AB are parallel and connected to VDD. Similarly, CD are parallel. And they are short, uh, they are in series with the AB. And in this case, AB are in series 
and CD are in series and they are parallel to the groups are parallel to each other. This is the pull up network which is connected to the pull down network and pull down network is connected to down. The circuit connection is over. Now let us take four buttons. Let us name it. We double click it and name it A. Second button we name it B. Third button we will name it C. And fourth button we name it D. So we have four buttons and we have named it ABCD. Now let us look. This is A and this thing over here is A. So we connect A here and we connect A over here. Similarly, oh, the, see here we, it's not connected. We connect it well again. Here we have B and here we have B. We can connect easily B from here. And here too, we bring it here and connect it. For example, here we have an overlapping, here too we have an overlapping, but we see there is not dot here. So these are not connected, but in this case there is a dot. So this is connected. So these dot conventions are really necessary. Again, let us connect C here. Ah, it doesn't look all too good. Let us delete it. Ah. We connect C here. We connect D here. And now D is connected to the bottom thing and C is connected to, to here. So our circuit is almost ready as we have seen here. So now the output is AB plus CD whole bar. That is if A and B both are 1, then output will be 0. Otherwise, if C and D both are 1, then output will be 0. And in case of ABCD2, the output will be 0. So let us simulate. Oh, sorry, before we simulate, we haven't connected the output yet. Let's connect the output and let's click simulate. When we simulate, when we turn on AB, the output turns 0. Again, when we turn on CD, the output turns 0. If we turn on ABCD, the output turns 0. So, ah, this is uh, this is actually working accord according to what we had what we have seen now you can also make a truth table of we make a truth table of this expression and combine uh, combine uh, uh, bring combined logic here uh, zeros zeros and ones bring the combined logic and see the output and you will see that this works and after we stop the simulation in case of if you have to provide a report we have to bring all the 16 combinations here and see the output for them then you have to press the stop simul button then you will see the timing diagram and you will show this timing diagram. You will present this timing diagram in the report. Uh, that's pretty, that is pretty much it for now. Thank you.